there's a bunch of other ones too. I'm trying to remember them all. There's my Uncharted ones. Uncharted 1 that I never finished. I got stuck on the second water ski, water jet thing or whatever. I got stuck because I kept dying at one po point and I couldn't continue, so I just said, you know what, I'm done playing Uncharted. I got frustrated. And then Uncharted 2, uh, I watched a person beat it before I beat it. Because... Actually, the, the reason why I, I did that was because we didn't actually have Uncharted 2 at, the, at that moment. So, I watched a video, I watched a series about it. I forget who it was. I think it was one of the Machinima guys that was playing it. And I was watching him play it. And when he ended up beating it, that's when we got Uncharted 2. And I was, you know, I was saying that I knew how to beat the game, and I beat the game. I didn't get all of the achievements enough so I could just have god mode. So I had unlimited ammo, I was disguised as the villain of the game, I think, and all this other stuff. That's one of the interesting things that I wish a lot of more single player, single player games did, is that they have built in cheat codes. Hear me out? So though, for game for people that are on consoles that don't have the luxury of being able to use, in the case of Oblivion and Skyrim, because I know those console codes, TGM, Toggle God Mode. You don't have that option. When you've beat the game, it doesn't matter. You beat the game. If you want a challenge, restart the game. Do something different. Like, mostly the only thing I can think of for a for the reason why Oblivion and Skyrim don't do it is because they're meant for the community to kind of change it. And that's one of the issues with the console games is that what can the community do for them? I'm saying for original Skyrim, not for special edition. Because apparently for special edition for the consoles, you can actually put, you can actually put custom mods on there. Minus the PlayStation 4 version, I think. Or the PlayStation versions. I don't know if they ever released it for PlayStation 3. I don't think so. I think it was only PS4, maybe PS5 now. Unclear. I don't have a PlayStation uh, 4 or 5. That's why I don't play games like that. And there's actually a very good reason why I don't have it. Uh, because I had a computer. And to me, back then, Back when those two were the big consoles, I originally thought that PC was the better one, because I was raised on it. And then back where, back a couple of years ago, I'm trying to remember, uh, back when I was only used, before I got this laptop that's right next to me, which is the, which is now my new favorite laptop because it is way better than all the laptops I've ever had combined. Uh, I always thought, uh, like, uh, I ended up making my Nintendo Switch my ultimate gaming console. And there's actually a reason for that. All my computers at that moment were quite trash. And I didn't have the money to spend... How much did I spend on you? I think about a thousand dollars? A grand, I think? I even got a discount on it, and it was still a thousand dollars. That is a lot for a person who just wants to play PC games. It didn't even have to be a laptop, it could have been a desktop, but I would have preferred a laptop because then I can move it from room, room to room, right? And especially since my living situation at that moment was I uh, was living with family, so I didn't really have the luxury of moving a tower, a monitor, mouse and keyboard, it would have been easier for the laptop. That's why I ended up asking a bunch of people over there, what's the best gaming laptop for value? Like, what's the best for, you know, the cheapest of the gaming laptops that were on the line, but that were, um, but that were, um, like, you know, I wouldn't be too bottlenecked too much. Naka recommended this one. I don't really care for not saying it. So I'm gonna say it now. I got the Acer Nitro 5. 
Now, I'm new to upgrading laptops, so I didn't know this. Just in case you don't know, I'm gonna say it too. I asked if there, if I were to get the CPU of the other version of the Nitro 5, the Nitro 5 has two different CPUs. It's got an Intel i5 and an Intel i7. Now I said that if I were to get the Intel i7, even the motherboard for the Intel i7, or no, I think I just said the CPU, I think. If I were to get the CPU of the Intel i7, the same one that supposedly works with the other one, can I actually get it to work with this laptop? I got told no. So I went, oh, okay. Uh, the only things that you can upgrade on a laptop are the, me or the memory and the storage space. That's it. Battery, if they ever actually end up upgrading the battery or whatever. But anyway, those are the only things you can upgrade. Or replace, technically. So I said, oh. Oh, okay. And technically a charging cable, but I mean internally. So when I first uh, got this laptop, um, before I even bought the laptop, I bought an M.2 SSD. I bought a Western Digital One, 500 gigabytes, uh, because I thought that I wouldn't need more because the laptop's automatically gonna have it. So, it's automatically gonna have a drive built into it, so why would I need to add a drive? So, I said, you know what, I'm just gonna get an M.2. I looked for the one that was cheap, and I don't wanna say cheap as in like, oh, I'm trying to, you know, not make it as powerful or something like that, but I looked for the cheapest one that had the best value for the performance and I found one I found again I found a M.2 Western Digital I think it's Western Digital blue which I think is more so for office space it didn't really matter it was only just to have uh, Windows installed on it so that it would be much faster than a hard drive but still as I was told hard drives are not really good for that kind of stuff so Anyway, who really cares? So I ended up going with a Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte uh, M.2 SSD, and I ended up having a lot of fun with that uh, for a while until I was able to, uh, until I wanted to start building up this tower right here, the one that I'm currently using. Now this little laptop right here uh, cost me, I think, at the end, uh, if I put the M.2 cost I don't want to count shipping either because I think I got free shipping for it but anyway with that cost plus the RAM upgrade I gave it uh, it would total to around $1,600 $1,700 if you round it up a little bit there might be like a few $50 or $60 kind of thing around the line but um, $1,600 to $1,700 for a laptop that's not including games or anything like that I can literally tell you though that if I were to value my Switch with all the digital games that are actually inside it, it would be around an NVIDIA uh, micro SD. It would be around uh, three thousand to about four thousand dollars, kind of thing. And that's because every game that was that I paid for, that were on it are new games, which are eighty, ninety dollars, ninety dollars in my area, but eighty dollars. No, they're eighty dollars, but they're ninety dollars with the tax here. Yeah, so ninety dollars. That's a hundred dollars every game for the most part. So that's a lot. And since I bought Sword and Shield mixed in together, uh, that's about two hundred dollars right then and there. So, uh, yeah. And that's us uh, for Sword and Shield only. What a cool thing, right? There we go. Okay, I was gonna, I was, I was thinking Squirts was gonna go down at some point, but he didn't. Good job, Squirts. But yeah, so I had a lot of fun with that laptop. It, it, it made me go through that work, uh, that area 
or that time of my life very easily, and it also went through a lot of other things really quickly too. So I am very happy with it. It helped me through a lot of tough times as well. So it was a, it was a very good laptop. And I've only had one issue with it. Uh, when I moved to over here, uh, specifically, uh, I ran into this issue. Um, I don't really know how to, I don't really know how to explain how it happened. So, when I first moved here, we had to go somewhere, uh, pretty much back to where I was before, um, before I moved here. So, uh, I had to go back there for some reason, and, or for a reason I don't remember what it was, and we had to, and we had to go and, oh wait, I need to grab that item. And I went into my normal area over there, and I ended up going on my laptop. I have my laptop charged, and everything, blah, 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 of course. Uh, later on, uh, when we had to leave, when I got home, when I got back here, I looked for my laptop charger, because my laptop. I wanted to have the charger plugged in. Not plugged into the computer, but plugged into the wall socket, so that way though, when my laptop does die, I just need to plug into the laptop, boom, done. Um, apparently I left it over there. So for a while, I had dead weight next to me. I had a paper weight next to me. I think at that point I didn't even have cube fold in there. Yeah, I think, I think cube wasn't even fully done. So I had two paperweights next to me. So I was like, yay, I can't use them. So I was trying to figure out, so I was, so I was texting them, asking them, hey, next time you go, like, uh, I was asking a cousin that usually goes, I have a lot of cousins. Uh, I asked him, hey, uh, next time you go, can you go look for my charger? Uh, didn't get anything. And I had to go there for something else, uh, because I think they were doing something over there. So I'm like, this is a perfect time. This is a perfect time for me. I can quite literally go over there, make sure I have my charger next time, and then I'll have a good time because I'll actually have my charger. I go there, I find my charger in literally 10 seconds. Apparently they set it aside, but they didn't tell me they found it. They didn't tell me that they found it. They found it, set it aside, ready to give it to me. Apparently, but at the first, like, 10 seconds that I got down there, I put my laptop down, because, well, I'm over there, might as well bring my laptop. I have the charger now. And I'll go, and quite literally, I found the charger in 10 seconds. I'm like, great! This is going to be a fun time now. I have my charger now. I won't be bored while I'm over there. Yeah, uh, so I helped them do the thing, and they drove me back, and I remember I had my charger this time. I remember at one point, during the entire time I didn't have the charger, I actually had to boot the laptop. Uh, one of my applications updated and completely overhauled their UI. Because I broke my because I broke the original so I did re-download it and it had a completely different UI that I did not get like I still have certain functions of that one but for the most part like I didn't like majority of it so I'm like I have to turn on my laptop I have to turn it on it's the only way I can get this application to be back to the way that I used to like it so, so you know what I'm gonna risk it uh, it went from uh, whatever it started off as, which it should have been 100 or maybe 90 or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And it went down to about 30%. Apparently, uh, trying to move a, a almost 
uh, I think it was about 700 megabyte uh, program over to uh, a USB stick that is guaranteed for about 8 gigs of memory or 8 gigs of space. Um, not very good. So it took really long and I was I was paying attention to the, uh, the battery life and I was looking at it going down and I was like, am I even going to get it or not? And it just so happened that it finished. I literally safely removed hard drive or whatever, did that normal shenanigans, shut down the laptop, put it down, made sure it shut down perfectly fine, and left it alone. It ended off at like 20-30% or something like that. Alright, so there we go, that 